The FITS Design Wizard gives you lots of scope to create insoles that match your patient's individual needs. You're in control. You can choose the default design or to use your clinical judgment to make your own adjustments. You can also see your design changes come to life as you make them. In this tutorial, we'll walk you through the software explaining each feature step by step. Design Selection Screen when you open the Design Wizard, the first screen you see is the Design Selection screen. This is where you choose the FITS Plus type. Click the arrows to see the different options. Next to the type, you can also decide on the usage of the insoles. This influences the available shoe types and the proposed top layer of your insole. You can choose between daily, sport, and safety shoes. For daily shoes, choose either comfort, narrow, or wide fit. Sports shoes have three options, running, soccer, or golf. Finally, for safety shoes, like daily shoes, you again have comfort, narrow, and wide shoe types. You can also choose the assembly of the insoles. They can be full length or three quarter length assembled, ready to be put straight into your patient's shoes. You can also order full-length not assembled if you want to assemble them yourself when they arrive. And we can also send them without a top cover. Just select the No Top Layer option. You can order a pair of insoles, but you also have the option to order only a left or right insole. Top Layer In the insole properties, you can change the size of the top layer and the base. Ideally, there should be just one UK size difference between the two components, but of course, if your patient is wearing shoes that are too small or too long, the difference can vary. Just remember that the UK size of the base cannot be larger than the size of the top layer. You might find the 2D view useful to help you decide on the sizes of the printed base. Keep in mind that it is a dynamic pressure image, so your patient's foot might appear a bit longer than it is. In the top layer screen, you can decide on the top layer properties of thickness, hardness, and material composition. The thickness can be 3 or 6 millimeters. Thickness is based on the usage that you selected on the first screen, daily, sport, or safety. You'll also see a recommended hardness based on your patient's weight. The lower your patient's weight, the lower the recommended shore value, and the higher your patient's weight, the bigger the recommended shore value. A Shore 20 PU soft top layer is never recommended and is always at your own clinical discretion. By adding the PU soft top layer, you add more cushioning to the insole cover. You can order the top layers with or without the synthetic leather finish. The synthetic leather layer adds a bit more durability and gives the insoles a more luxurious look. The heel padding option allows you to add local cushioning in the top cover. We have three solutions fat pad, heel spur, and plantar fasciitis. When you choose one of these, a cutout is made in the EVA top cover and then filled with the softer PU soft material. A thin EVA or synthetic leather layer is added on top of that. In the zone width screen, you can adjust the width of the insole in general or in three separate predefined zones. You have the metatarsal area, the midfoot area, and the heel area. By clicking on the plus and minus symbols below the insole, all three zones can be adjusted together. Or to adjust the zone separately, click the areas next to the zone width that you want to change. For this feature, it can be useful to use the 2D visual to see where width adjustments are needed. The stiffness correction is a clever tool which lets you adjust the stiffness of five predefined zones of the base. The values range from one, the most flexible, to five, the stiffest. You can easily adjust each zone by clicking on the arrows. If you click the reset button, you go back to the initial calculations. These are based on the roll-off pattern of your patient and their weight. The heavier your patient, the higher those values will be. Heel. In the heel region, there are four different corrections available. The first is the heel wedge you can choose to add a 15-degree medial or lateral heel wedge. This correction is recommended based on the foot scan dynamic measurement. If a heel wedge is advised, it will be pre-filled in the design software. 
Make sure to double check this, however, as this correction is based on the difference in loading between the medial and the lateral part of the heel. The heel cup height can also be adjusted for FITS Plus insoles. There are five different heights, from low to high. Note that the available options might change depending on the other corrections added to the design. For example, the top layer hardness will have an influence on your available heel cup options. You can also add a heel raise to the insoles, which is useful in the case of a leg length discrepancy. You can increase the height of the heel by up to 12 millimeters. The heel skive option is available on the medial and the lateral side. On the medial side, the depth of the skive can be increased to 8 millimeters. On the lateral side, this is limited to 6 millimeters. Note that by adding a higher heel skive, the heel cup will automatically increase too. Midfoot. Three different design options are available in the midfoot part of the insole. The height and the location of the navicular support can be modified. Just adjust the sliders next to or underneath the insole. You can also use the marker to change the height or to shift the highest point of the medial support anterior or posterior by click and dragging it. For the lateral edge of the insole, you can choose a low lateral edge, no edge at all, or increase the height of the edge by using the slider. The same goes for the medial edge, where you can also increase the height of the edge up to 6 millimeters. Metabar. There are three different design options in the metatarsal part of the software. The first is the metatarsal bar, which is available up to 6 millimeters. However, unlike traditional insoles, you won't need the same height because of the material we use. One or two millimeters will be enough for most of your patients, and three is quite a significant correction, suitable for more severe cases. Metapad. Next to the metatarsal bar are the metatarsal pads. There are two options, T-shape and teardrop. After selecting your shape, choose the height of the support. Don't exaggerate the height, as one or two millimeters should provide sufficient support. Use the arrows or click and drag the marker to change the metatarsal pad's position. The 2D visual can be a great help when deciding which metatarsal support is best and where the ideal position is. Cutouts. Four different cutout options are available in the design of the FITS Plus. The first meta cutout, the first ray cutout, the fifth meta cutout, and the fifth ray cutout. Note, when you select one of the cutouts, it will influence the available foot corrections. Foot correction. If you need to make a forefoot correction, there are five different forefoot shapes to choose from. These are Meta 1, Meta 1 and 2, 2 to 4, 2 to 5, and Meta 5 forefoot correction. You can choose the height from 2 millimeters up to 4 millimeters high, and they can be flexible or stiff. In most cases, you will use the flexible correction. The stiff forefoot correction is especially used for specific cases. For example, to reduce the impact of the first joint for someone with a hallux rigidus. Correction Overview There are three different ways to see the corrections you've applied to the insole design. The first is the blue box outline below the design with a check mark. In this case, you can see a metatarsal pad was added to the design. Another way to know which corrections were added is by clicking on left or right on the top of the screen. A stack menu with all extrinsic corrections applied to the insole is shown. This allows you to easily remove or open and adjust a specific correction. Click on the trash icon to remove it or on the text to adjust it. In the viewing panel on the right, there is also a third option, showing you a general overview of the adjustments made to the default design. It gives you a clear comparison table of the proposed values versus the actual values. Order button. The order button is always active during the design process. When you know what you want for your insole and you've entered those details, you can click Order and go straight to the checkout screen. You don't have to go through design options that you don't need. Checkout screen. When you click on the Order button, you get a full overview of all the parameters added to your design. Make sure to double-check these parameters because once you submit your order, you cannot adjust the design. 
the software creates and displays the final visualization of your designed insoles. If you're in a hurry, you don't need to wait for this render to display. You can confirm the order without viewing it. Add a reference ID to the order in the designated field. This reference will be shown on the label of the FITS box and can be used to identify the order when it arrives in your clinic. If your patient wants multiple pairs, you can easily change the quantity here too. After confirming the order, the system sends the insole or pair of insoles to production. A unique order ID number is generated and shown in the foot scan order list. If you have any questions on a specific order, include this order ID number to help our team to find your order quickly. Now that we've explained the features of the Materialize Fit Suite Design Wizard, you've seen the benefits it offers you and your patients. Remember that you can always use the Reset button to return to the default values. If you hit the Reset button by mistake, don't panic. There is a second button asking you to confirm that you want to reset. And the Materialize Motion team are always here to help if you need us.